Boat number 66, uh, Mohamed Barabi lined up on the outside. You can see uh, Jeremy Perez, he's also on that inside split. Walid Al Shoshana also down there. Huge class. There's James Bushel lined up on the outside, outside. The triple sevens, that's Juan Lascano. Perm Palm uh, down there on the T-73 boat. That's Waleed Al Shoshani riding for the Qatar team. And uh, the gentleman lined up right next to Jeremy Perez. That looks like uh, Yosef Abdul Razak. That's uh, Sam Johansson out there as well on that outside. And we're just taking a look here on the inside split. That is boat number 81, Bailey Cunningham from Queensland, Australia, coming over to join us. I know Traley's probably listening in on the live stream. There's Dustin Farley as uh, we get ready to go. Francois Midori, Rasmus Cockhansen, or excuse me, yeah, boat 78. That's uh, Rasmus Cockhansen out of Denmark, and there's Marcus Jorgensen, also hails from Denmark. Gorgi Kasha on the uh, pole. Huge, huge lineup of talent. As we get going, let's talk a little bit about the Grand Prix and the total points. Jeremy Perez coming into this in the lead on the overall points with 221. Francois Midori in second with 185 for the World Series. Sam Johansson with 183 points is in third. Yosef Abdul Razak is in fourth with 156. And James Bushel in fifth with 151. Walid Al Sharshani is in sixth. And Rasmus Kakansen in seventh. That is uh, how it looks for the World Series as we get ready to go. Moto number one for Pro Runabout. That is our tower as we get ready to go. Hopefully you were able to uh, get the heads up and uh, come back and join us live. Jack Wells, come on Bushy, and Mikhail Peterson shouting out for your Denmark riders. You got two of them, Rasmus Kock Hansen and uh, Marcus Jorgensen, both from Denmark and uh, representing in a field of 17 riders. Here are the different countries that are representing as we get ready to go. Kuwait, the United Kingdom, of course the U.S., Co Hungary, Denmark, as I'd mentioned, Thailand, France, Sweden, Japan. Makes perfect sense as we sit here and get ready in the runabout division to talk about a performance company that has been instrumental in a ton of world titles. 
DeansTea.com, performance specialist for all your watercraft needs. Trust the team with more pro stock and Aqua X titles than anyone in the world. Dean's team. Uh, we had two ride-ins, by the way, uh, Matthias Simon and Dustin Farthing. Dustin's on that inside, and uh, Matthias also lined up on the inside split. And as you know, hurry up and wait sometimes is what happens at the World Finals. Hey, that's part of racing. Rubbin's racing and sometimes waiting's racing. Look at the celebrity holders down here. Christoph Girello down there holding for Jeremy Perez from Go Fast U.S. Chris, of course, a real proud papa after that stellar performance from Sebastian Girello yesterday. It was uh, unbelievable watching him in his ski class. And uh, Chris is going to have to find a more trophy room if uh, that performance is any indication because... Sebastian Girello is going to be a massive impact on our sport. Great rider, fantastic competition, uh, and a world title yesterday. I want to thank all of our world titleists that uh, competed this week. We gave out our first round of awards last night. And it looks like uh, a couple of the boats just trying to air out. That's uh, Rasmus Cockhansen that has his hood up on the inside. Mr. Ramadan. Ramadan uh, down there, uh, his son was racing this week in the junior class and did so good. It was really fun to watch. Mr. Ramadan uh, down there supporting the team. Well, we thought we were going to fire this off quick, but it uh, looks like we had to actually also make a course correction. Now is the time to rumble, and Josh Bro saying, let's go, Bailey. Just uh, hanging out as uh, we get ready to go for the pro runabout GP. That's what's on the line. We're on race number 13. This is going to be the first, I believe, of two motos. It is first of two motos for both of those uh, premier classes, both pro runabout GP and pro ski.
All right, uh, just taking another quick look down this line out. We get ready to go. I see Chris. And uh, there is Tori Snyder. You saw as we kind of cruise the different riders here. Samuel Hansen's boat. <laughs> With Samuel Hansen sitting on the back of it, chilling. Uh, that's Johan Johansson, his dad. Sam's going to be aboard that in just a little bit. See Juan Loscano and the team down there on the far outside, along with uh, Team UK. That is a 158 performance on the outside, outside. And Georgi Kasha trying to keep cool as we get ready to go. Still in a uh, standby status. You're watching the Runabout GP. We are live. And that is Skinny Mo. 25 world titles for his country, Kuwait. Lake Cavasu City, the home of the London Bridge. That bridge was designed in 1799 by Scottish engineer John Rennie. Completed in 1831. It was actually the original bridge that spanned the River Thames in uh, London. They uh, took it down and moved it over here. And uh, they actually put purple lights on that bridge when uh, Queen Elizabeth passed away just not too long ago. We'll be right back after this message with racing. WGP1 World Championship. Try bracing. Basu City, USA. Now we're coming back to you early just to make sure that the excitement of our audience is both on site and online continue. If it's an amazing weekend so far and you guys are amazing as well, especially those who tuning in online at this keyword series from both channels, Facebook and YouTube, you know what to do. Do subscribe, like, and share this live streaming. Well, up next will be exclusively tuning in feed four. Starting off with the Moto One Pro Roundabout GP, then followed by the WGP One Moto Two Pro M Women's Ski Stock before Moto Two Amateur Women's Roundabout Eleven Hundred Stock, and then will be the Moto Two of many of you, especially the Thai fans, are waiting for the Junior Ski Ten to Twelve Stock. And then we heat up the tournament with more adrenaline with Moto2 Pro Sport GP and many more. Are you ready? Are we ready? If we're ready, let's have some fun. Let's go. Back to you, Don. Thank you so much, CK. Yeah, I know we're going to have a whole lot more fun once we get underway, but uh, right now we're just enjoying the lovely afternoon sun of Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And what better day to hang out down here than Pro Weekend. And as you know, Saturday is the beginning of the end because we're only going to be here two more days. And then we're going to have to pack up all this amazing gear and uh, train some more 
and then take a couple months and then you'll see us all again <laughs> in Pattaya, Thailand, 14th through the 19th for the final jewel in a beautiful triple crown of racing. That's the WGP1 race series. Special thanks to Amazing Thailand, one of our great sponsors, and of course, Thai Airways. That's the World Cup Grand Prix, 14th through the 19th. And it is gonna be really, I think, truly a spectacle once we get to Thailand and we're able to uh, get these guys an opportunity on that final round to win $100,000 for some of these top riders. I mean, a lot of money is at stake and a lot of these riders actually came over from Poland. So uh, that first round in Poland uh, happened in July. This is the second round in uh, Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And then we're gonna go from here to uh, Pedia, Thailand. All of this, the brainchild, uh, this World Series, the brainchild of people that are fully dedicated and in love with the sport. And we got the boats go loaded and they are started and ready to go. Looks like uh, we're getting these boats started and the uh, live stream. And uh, we've got the shot from the tower in the back as we take a look at these riders as we get ready to go and you can see this lineup. Again, Georgi Kasha on that far uh, left corner of the screen. Next to him, Marcus Jorgensen. That's your inside split. Rasmus Kockhansen over there. Francois Midori also over there. Jeremy Perez, Al Baz, Dustin Farthing all on the inside. Lert Pong from Thailand. Bailey Cunningham lined up on that outside portion of the inside split. James Bushel on the outside, outside. Good morning from Thailand. Hi, Indy. Hi, Pia, say and go, Rance, uh, rest with Scott Hansen. Eduardo Ruben Lopez, vamos, Juancho. So that would be a go Juan Lascano, I'm guessing. Yes, I'm so sorry, we have to wait just a little longer for Orca. Oh man, this is such the toughest part of any race. Uh, when we get them up to the line, but then we make them wait, it is uh, so hard on them. Nerve wracking to say the least. Well, good morning, Jet Ski Republic from Brizzy, Ozzy. Ah, pen yachts. It's 3 a.m. in Thailand. Thank you so much. I did not know it was that early. You guys are really getting up early to watch this. Well, right here in Lake Havasu, Arizona, it's uh, 1.14 in the afternoon. Paul Levin uh, saying best of luck to all riders. And uh, Brian Finlinson talking about uh, some of the craziness that happened last year. Uh, Scotty Moore saying uh, good morning from Christchurch, New Zealand. Scotty, what, uh, what time is it there? Here it's 1 in the afternoon, about 1.14 1 in the afternoon. Oh, we got them rolling. Let's see, heads up, we got 27 races to get through today, and we're only on 13. Uh-oh. 
What are you waiting for, Don? You know, it just takes me so long to get ready, Hannah. <laughs> Uh, we're actually, uh, we were waiting for a couple of things. Uh, we had actually some people in the water over on the left-hand side of the track. It's very, very hot this afternoon, and uh, we were just making sure that we had that track completely clear. Uh, we also had a couple of boats drifting into the track, so we had to clear those out. Uh, Hannah was asking about uh, why the holdup, so I just wanted to give you that. And uh, right now we've got a rider asking for a two-minute hold. Two-minute hold. Uh, that's Al Baz, actually, that needs a two-minute hold. All right, so uh, they've got a start. And James Bushel just a smidge late, but Waleed Al Sharshani, writing for Qatar, smoked that. Uh-oh, red flag. So they are going to uh, call a red flag on him. Yeah. As you know, red flag can come up for a couple of different reasons. The red flag can happen if they have premature acceleration, but it can also be a big factor when you've got these big boats. The uh, course marshals and the race director are going to be very strict on uh, what lanes. They've got to make sure that the riders do not change lanes. And if you do, Unfortunately, that also can cause a red flag and you can't get a penalty. Oh, that is so close. I'm not sure who to call on that. Hey, you bet, Zach. No problem. And I got a giggle out of that, too. That's so true, Brian. Yeah, it is very hard to hold these big boats. I know we have two holders for them, but, man, it feels like days we could have all four holders and still not be able to hold these guys. Jessica Siobhan is uh, chiming in. Good to have her. Lucas uh, cheering on at two French riders. That's Francois Midori and Jeremy Perez. Yeah, so uh, the way the rules work on lane changing, if you start moving over too early, in other words, changing lanes, you can only move over one lane after halfway through, and then you can move over as much as you need to as you get close to the first turn buoy. Uh, again, the announcers from the tower are actually uh, talking live about the course marshals uh, that were speaking to the riders. All right, so um, you can see that meeting, that's exactly what they were talking about is guys have to hold your lane for a certain time down that front grid and what uh, the staff is doing is they're going over that start procedure with all of the riders just to make sure that everybody's clear on not just moving over too quickly. So again, just making sure everybody's safe and also making sure that it's fair. And so uh, that's what they're doing on the start line. And they're gonna get the riders back to the lineup. Wow, that is a pirate ship, ARG. What a cool looking boat that actually uh, parks over at the Nautical Inn. The original location of the world finals over at the Nautical Inn. Uh, Yosef, uh, well, great question. I had a question on where is Yosef Abdul Razak. So if you take a look on the outside split, that would be uh, the riders that are going to go to the blue buoys. Uh, Yosef Abdul Razak is four in from the pole position. So boat number 66 is on the pole position on the outside. Then you'll see 84, 86, and then the number one boat, that's Yosef Abdul Razak. One of the winningest riders out of Kuwait. And uh, Yosef, on that number one boat, he rides for Zane Finance. Just an amazing athlete. Shaheen, I'm so glad you asked about him. Yeah, he's a fourth over. Now you're looking at the inside split. So you, you actually can't see him on the screen yet. Yeah, definitely one of the 
Yeah, uh, Balls was off his key, and no, I don't think he was. That was probably why they had the conversation about hold your line. <laughs> Lauren, that's awesome. I know, I feel like a pirate today. Look at that pirate ship off of the deal. That looks so... I wonder how fun it would be to hang out there from the pirate ship off that back stretch and actually watch the racing. When we say we could hoist the sails or... Here I am gonna I'm gonna try to speak sailor speak. That's probably not gonna go well for me. I do know ARG. That seems like a good pirate term. ARG. You can see the uh, area along the beach is just packed. Okay, we're on, and they got the engines going, and Robbie Hall from the tower has got the two in the one card up. Good start for James Bushels on the outside. Outside. Looks like a solid start. All right, we're on the third turn on the splits. And that looks like Al Baz, unofficially. And that's going to be Oliver Kyle, oh, excuse me, that's Skinny Mo. I almost said Oliver Kockhansen from stand up racing. But Skinny Mo has the whole shot. <laughs> that was funny. All right, Skinny Mo on boat 66. He's at that boat number from the moment he started racing. And then Al Baz, Al Baz uh, coming from the inside split, comes in second on the track. But Skinny Mo, Skinny Mo had the pole position from the outside, and he is the uh, leader who got the whole shot. Can you make stop tie subtitles? Well, I'll ask him, sir. Tim Hicks out of Kansas saying hi. Skinny Mo just dropping that shoulder as he comes on to the front stretch. Al Baz follows him through. All right, while well, Lead Alassani is in third, your rider for Qatar. And Jeremy Perez up in fourth. Skinny Mo is leading, and he came from that uh, inside split. Oddly, um, Mohamed Barabi did not go to the pole and stop. Well, he did. I take that back. He did. But what was bad is he wasn't able to get his boat going. He get it up in 17th in that first round. 17th with boat problems all the way through every moto. It's a really tough break for Skinny Mo. That is uh, Walid Al Shoshani in third. Al Baz was in second. All right, Jorgensen in fifth. All 
right, Mohamed El Paz in second. And uh, Skinny Mo after a very impressive hole shot. Leading in. That's a fresh looking boat for uh, boat number 86. Jeremy Perez. That's June Ikema, actually. I was just thinking, that does not look like Jeremy's boat. And there is Yosef Abdul Razak in that top grouping as well. All right, so Skitty Mo on the outside. 17th overall out of Poland. 2021, he was the World Series champion. But he is trying to defend a title, but he comes into this pretty far back in the numbers. In second place, it is Mohamed Albaz. Mohamed is a 12-time world champion, and then that is June Ikema in third. And uh, boat number one in that fourth place. So again, Yosef Abdurazak up in fourth. Kenny Mo uh, making some uh, hand signals. I think he was trying to get around a lap rider. It's Albaz in second. Albaz a four-time, excuse me, a third place in the King's Cup. He's a 12-time world champion. His first win was in 2007. Gentleman up at second. And it's Waleed Alani that is in third, and then Ikema in fourth, and Yosef Abdul Razak in fifth. And to number 86 boat, there are two 86 boats out here this weekend. And uh, one of them is June Ikema. June got to third last year out here on the endurance class. He's 49 years old. He's out of Tokyo, Japan. Three-time Japanese champion. Uh, 2018, he was a Thai champion. And also, uh, 2019, he was Philippines champion. His life goals are pretty simple. He said win all races. You're looking at uh, June Ikema there for a minute. He was in third place, fourth place in boat 86. Kenny Mo and then Albaz in second. Albaz had a great start from that inside split. In fact, he pulled the whole shot from the inside. Skinny Mo pulled the in shot in a whole shot from the outside split. Then up in third, Waleed. Now the gentleman riding for Qatar. He actually lives in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, but he rides for Qatar jet ski team from Qatar and RIP speed performance. And then again, uh, June Ikema just in the foreground of that pirate ship. You saw him hitting those last couple of series of turns before they had to go on the backstretch. They take one tiny little dip into uh, that yellow buoy that you just saw, and then they're on the backstretch. This is the split section, and Skinny Bow is working his way through traffic on the outside split. So there's two splits, opportunity for the riders to pick one direction or another. And uh, I think Muhammad wasn't waving, I think he's pointing to lap riders. So it's Mo trying to get around, uh, trying to get around 
tried to get around some lap traffic. I'm impressed that guy could take his hand off of the boat at any time. Those boats go from zero to 70 in under four seconds. Skitty Mo, by the way, Barabi started racing at 17. He trains at the Marine Club in Kuwait City, and he has a dream of starting a jet ski school to teach Kuwaitis how to train and compete in big tournaments. All right, so uh, Skitty Mo is going to just go to that inside, get a little bit of clear traffic. He feels like he could get around the lap traffic a little bit faster that way. Oh my gosh, Tina, thank you so much. Okay, I was able to uh, get some numbers from uh, some of the other riders further back. So we'll start with uh, Skinny Mo leading and Alba's second. Walid Al Sharshani is in third. Ju Nikoma is in fourth. Yosef Abdul Razak is in fifth. Looks like uh, James Bushel is in sixth and Sam Johansson in seventh. We've got a big moto. Pro Runabout will be running 12 laps. The only good news is they only have to do it twice, especially as tightly wound as these boats are. Again, uh, your rundown. Skinny Mo leading, Albaz second, Walid Al Shoshani third, Yun Ikema in fourth, Yosef Abdul Razak in fifth. James Bushel in sixth, and Sam Johansson in seventh. Actually, Dustin Farley has moved up into sixth. James. Dustin Farthing is in six, Bushel seventh, Sam Johansson eight. Skinny Mo, Muhammad Barabi, 25 world titles to this gentleman who rides for Kuwait. And uh, that is truly a rumble in the jumble, isn't it? Rumble in the jungle. I guess it could be a jumble as well. He was truly having to work through a tremendous amount of lap traffic, but uh, manages to pull it off. All right, so um, Mohamed Barabi, 17th overall, coming out of Poland after being plagued by a ridiculous number of engine problems. He was born uh, in January, and he's 39 years old. He's a lieutenant colonel at the Ministry of Interior Driver License Department. His uh, boat, by the way, is built by his brother Abdullah. And uh, rides a pro rider, Kuwait. 28 world titles. Excuse me, I was undercounting. 28 world titles. And he is just finishing it up. Congratulations to Skitty Mo for moto number one. Beautiful win for this rider from Kuwait. Spectacular ride.
All right, El Baz is going to make uh, that second place finish. And then Walid Al Sharshani. June Ikema on fourth place. And Yosef Abdul Razak. Fifth. I think Dustin Farthing got up into sixth. James Bushel seventh. And Samuel Hansen eighth. Uh, we'll get a clearer picture of that in motor number two for you, but that is my unofficial call. You were watching Pro Runabout GP, moto number one. <laughs> Shaheen, I'm going to tell him you said that. I was just reading the uh, comments on the live stream. By the way, Skinny Mo has the Guinness World Record holder. For the most IJSBA World Championship wins. <laughs> All right, you've just uh, been finishing up with a pro runabout GP class, and again, Skinny Mo taking that first moto win. There are going to be two motos. It's time for Tithe to encourage each other. Forward the encouragement to make Thai people and Thailand stronger. Sports Authority of Thailand. National Sport Development Funds. Freedom Racing. Wow, that was amazing race indeed. Well, congratulations to Kraft 66 from Kuwait, Muhammad Birbaye, unofficially uh, was the winner of Moto1 Pro Roundabout GP. And we're looking forward for the Moto2 and Moto3 coming up. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, they're getting ready behind me, the ladies um, of the WGP1 Moto2 Pro and Women's Ski Stock are getting ready in the water at the moment. But before that, let's have a quick look on the comments in the comment section below. Um, in the Ski World Series, we've got many fans rooting for Orca from Thailand, right? And two more um, competitions, two more races to go before Orca will be joined. Um, he's race Moto2 in the water again, so kindly, kindly wait, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, whoa, we've got many more. Shout out to Emma Gatsby. Come on, Lou. Oh, <laughs> Lucy Gatsby from Great Britain. And also, that we've got um, many B. Uh, wow, there are a lot of, you know, like amateurs and also professionals, riders here. We've got Greg Wall. Hello, Don from Oregon. We love you guys are doing great job. Be safe. All right, we've got viewers from Australia as well. Asi, asi, asi. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, right now let's tune in the next race, which again will be the WGP1 Moto2 Pro M Women's Ski Stock. Now back to you, Don. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate that, CK. All right, let's get you the update. This is the second moto for your Pro-Am Women Ski Stock class. And down on the line is uh, Lucy Gansby after taking the win in that first moto with a spectacular push from third to the lead. Eminelli Ortendahl with that second place spot. Yasmin Eprouse ended up in third. Reese Geis in fourth, Jana Borkstrom in fifth, Anna Glennon was in sixth, Mackenzie Schecksneider in seventh, Sabrina Cook in eighth, Yanina Johansson in ninth, Paula Narali in a tenth place spot, and Shaney Seidenberg in eleventh, Sadie Mir in twelfth, Ariana Tayer in thirteenth, Alyssa Musselbun in fourteenth, Lisa Kassan Batalia in fifteenth, and Alif Bader all on the line. Uh, just a real camp recap. Uh, Eminelli Ortendahl is lining up on the inside split. She's on the pole position. And you've got Lucy Gatsby on the outside 
pole position. Boat number 327. You know what? I have to just fix that really quick. I was looking at pro women ski. I got a little excited there. Pro and women's ski stock. It was uh, Lucy Gansby with the win on that one. Lucy Gansby followed by Eminelli Ortendahl and uh, Yasmin Epros. Pro Women Ski Stock is on the line. And we have got some celebrities. Uh, Reese Geis is lined up on the inside. Uh, Jana, Jana Borkstrom's also on that inside, lined up. She's third in, 851. Actually, 831. That is uh, Ariana Tayer, going to be one to watch, also lined up on the inside split. So he had a good start. Again, Eminelli was on the pole on the inside, and Lucy Gatsby on the 4 4 boat on that outside split. All right, boat number 30. That's Yana Borgstrom. It looks like Yana's on uh, one of the Cambodian boats. All right, that is going to be, I believe that's Anna Glennon, followed by Yasmin Ebrous. Oh, Anna with the whole shot, Yasmin second. That's going to be Gatsby in third on the 4-4. And that T30, that is going to be Jana Borgstrom. And then 98 is back in fifth. That is Eminelli Ortendahl. Again, your recap. Anna Glennon with the whole shot. Yasmin E. Prowse second. Lucy Gansby on the, well, she's normally the eight ball. She's on the 4-4. Four, four. If you had them up, there's still eight. <laughs> she's in third. T30, that is Jana Borgstrom and uh, Eminelli Ortendahl. Rounds out your top five. Just to recap, Jana got fourth in the first moto. Oh, Yasmeed is going to run right past Anna Glennon. All right, so Yasmeen Eprous, your new leader on boat 64. All right, Yasmeen Eprous, your new leader. Anna Glennon, second. And uh, Lucy Gatsby in third. Jonna Borgstrom, fourth, and Emma in fifth. So Yasmin E. Prowse from Estonia, your new leader.
And she finally figured out a name for that boat. Brand new boat for her. And she has had some incredible combinations this year. And it has rocketed her into the European uh, eyes in the circuit. Uh, Yasmin Epros wasn't able to do the first round of the series, so currently the leader in that series is Lucy Gadsby on the 173. In second is Imanelli Orton Dahl with 166 points. And in third is Lisa Kazan Batalia with 166 points. And in Nays Mishler in fourth with 144, Siri Solonen in fifth with 129 points on the overall. So Yasmin Eprous. And it looks like uh, Anna Glennon might be dropping back to third. I would think that Lucy Gadsby got around her as well. So it's going to be Yasmin Eprous, Lucy Gadsby, and Anna Glennon. So Yasmin gets out. Actually, I think Eminelli snuck around as well. So Yasmin Eprous. Followed by Lucy Gadsby. That is your race leader as the courtesy markers drop for Yasmin E. Prouse. Rides for Team 64. She lives in Parnu, Estonia. She is 21 years fast. She's the Estonian champion in 2017. Her race number, by the way, is a combination of her brother and her dad's race numbers. Yeah, Lucy Gansby right there behind her. So this is going to be the battle of the titans between Lucy Gadsby and Yasmin Eprous. And that is Eminelli Orton Dahl in third. So Lucy Gadsby passed once again from uh, that second place up for third place up to second and Eminelli has moved up into third your race leader with the whole shot from the outside that was Yasmin Eprous and Anna Glennon in fourth The person I'm missing in that top grouping was Jana Borgstrom. I wonder if she was the one that uh, went down in that corner. I'll find out for you as soon as we can. Watching Lucy Gansby continue to chase Yasmin and Eprous, and that is getting closer. You're watching the uh, young lady that came from the outside split. She ended up in third coming out of that. Uh, Eminelli Ortendahl actually had the pole position on the inside. But Yasmin Eprous nailed that whole shot from the outside split. And the uh, triple sevens also had a great start on that outside. And that is uh, boat number 160. I don't see a rider that goes with that. Here's your two top riders. And uh, working lap traffic, actually. That is 
64 and 44. 44 is Lucy Gadsby. Lucy is in second. And 64 is your race leader. That is Yasmin Epros. Her and uh, she's actually twins with her brother. All right, Yasmin E. Prouse. Only 21 riding that uh, Kawasaki SXR. Dad raised for 40, 14 years. She's a twin. You know, she actually debuted in Estonia at a uh, race called the Free Time Cup. And she did that in 2013. And as you can see, she is getting along quite well with her new boat, Max. And she likes to nickname all of her boats. Roxy is one of them. Loki is another one. I'm sure I can imagine why she calls it that. Uh, this one is her latest and newest boat, Max. All right, so Yasmin, Lucy Gansby, and Eminelli Ortendahl. Looks like Eminelli might have got stuck in a bit of lap traffic. And Yasmin Prouse, off of that back stretch, had to do a little check up there. She caught one of those big waves. She's no stranger to it, though. She's raced in a lot of big signature races in Europe on the ocean, and she's pretty comfortable in rough water. All right, looks like Gatsby might have gone to the inside to see if she could get around. So, yep, Gatsby did go to that inside split. This is the final lap, and Yasmin Neprouse did have some traffic, but she's able to take the win. Congratulations to Yasmin Neprouse. And Team Estonia, very happy to see that. Lucy Gansby second. So actually just uh All right, just finishing up with Pro-Am Women's Ski Stock. And again, your top three finishers on that were Yasmin Eprouse and uh, Lucy Gadsby and Eminelli Ortendahl. All right, we are still finishing up with the Pro-Am Women's Ski Stock. WGP1 World Championship.
Jet Tribe Racing. All right, I'm down here. Uh, we just got a chance to catch up with one of the most celebrated riders in the world. His name is Skinny Mo, and he just took the win in Runabout GP. He already has 28 titles. Right now, he's making a run for yet another one. Skinny Mo, you had such a tough break in the first round in Poland. It must feel so good to be able to take that win. Give me your feelings right now. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God to get uh, first place in Moto1 in uh, Arizona Lake Havis World Final. Uh, not good for me in Poland because I have like a crack with my hole. It's keep me out of the race. I didn't uh, join the race in Poland for the first round. I uh, hope to doing very well tomorrow with Moto3 and 2 and the 3. Uh, today was very good. The ski running good. I used the old one because you know the other one the new is broken in Poland. We prepare other new one 2022. It's gonna be a surprise for King Cup Thailand. That's why we keep engine uh, like reliability to finish the race and the handling. So I'm very happy today. Oh, fantastic. Anything you'd like to say for your fans? Uh, I wanna tell them like push up for Mohammed and keep uh, positive and hope to win uh, tomorrow. Outstanding. Skinny Mo, thanks for taking time with the CK. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, tuning in are live on Facebook and YouTube at Disky World Series for more entertainment, excitement, and more races coming up next. All right, we're back. You're watching the amateur runabout, women's runabout. This is 1100 ski stock. Uh, the young lady that took the win in this first moto is just spectacular. I think it's more impressive even is the fact that she is so young. We're watching Sasina Poonam, the young lady from Thailand. In second place, Shandapa. Pomai from Thailand. She's sponsored by PTT Lubricants. In third, Orifan Tirakpanich. And then in fourth, Sophie Francis. Uh, that was how it ended up in moto number one. Madison Elders was fifth. But right now, the whole shot once again. That's the T26 boat of Sasina Punam. All right, and uh, boy, this looks very similar, doesn't it? Uh, that's the 25 boat of Orifan Tira Popinich in the second place position. And Chanapa Pumai from Thailand in the third position. And uh, boat number, looks like 99, Ahmed Amaj Zuhari. She is from Malaysia, so yet another country uh, joining us this afternoon. So Estonia is represented on the water, uh, Chiba Japan on the water. Uh, several very fast Thai ladies are on the water uh, and some riders from the USA as well. And uh, Sasina Pulnam is your race leader. The 
Yeah, so this is uh, not going to be a World Series race, but that doesn't take away any of the importance for these riders. So she is uh, make it a run for a world title here in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and this is the second moto of uh, three big motos for these guys. We're watching race number 15. Got a little bit of a slow uh, start midway through. That's about uh, 99. Ahmad Zahari from Malaysia. And uh, boat number five is in the fifth place spot. That's Ak Akimi Ikoma from Achiba, Japan. She rides for Tome and Elf and uh, Pound One and Jet Pilot. All right, so this rundown, uh, pretty quick for you. You got Sassini Punam as the courtesy markers come out. The two young ladies that are battling, that's fifth place that you are watching right now. and. That young lady is Akima Ikoma. Right behind her is boat number 176. That's Valentina Lascana. And then the lady moving up and just got around Valentina is boat number 55. And that is Sophie Francis trying to get around the fifth place rider. And that is uh, the young lady from Japan that she is pressuring. So. The battle for fifth place is between Akimi Ikuma and uh, Sophie Francis. And then this young lady is uh, Jamie Bohat. Back in eighth. Jamie, uh, one of our great promoters uh, on the uh, Midwest Tour. I think it's Great Lakes Watercross. Two more laps to go. Again. Uh, the T26 is uh, Sasima Poonam. Hey, Greg from Oregon. It's good to have you guys joining us. Uh, Steve Wilson is shouting on a ton of people. Watching uh, Sasima as uh, she comes through, and a lot of people shouting out to uh, Sasima. Sasima Putnam. Sasina, a student and incredible young lady. Orapan, Tara Popanich.
right behind her. Terrapon has won uh, multiple tie cups. And uh, Terrapapanich Orifan is her name. Orifan is one of the fastest young lady runabout racers spanning the globe. Doesn't really matter what continent you put her on. She's quite good. And right now she's up in second. And uh, she's, she lives in the Nakhorn province of Thailand. She's 33 years old, watching Fawn. She rides for Sea Dew Thailand and uh, had that watercraft built by Sea Dew Thailand. She believes in a lot of regular training and exercise and competitive discipline. She said her race number was given to her by a month. We we're talking about the second place racer. And that is uh, Sasina that you are watching as a checker flag drops. Congratulations to Sasina Punan. All right, so again, it looked like on that final, uh, it was Hasina Punam for the win. 25 of Fawn, Tirupapanich for second. 65 for Chanapa Pulmai, another Thai rider for third. And then Sophie Francis was fourth, and Ahmed Zuari from Malaysia was fifth. And it looks like Renee Hill, sixth. Elder 7th, and we'll be right back. It's time for Thais to encourage each other. Forward the encouragement to make Thai people and Thailand stronger. Sports Authority of Thailand. National Sport Development Funds. Freedom Racing. And that wraps up Moto2 Amateur Women's Roundabout 1100 stock. Congratulations unofficially to T26, Sustina Pyongyang from Thailand. Well, coming up next, guys, Thai fans especially, we know you have been waiting for the next race when T Triple Six Orca, a 10-year-old boy from Thailand, is racing. No more waiting. It's now. Do subscribe, like, and share because the Junior Ski 10 to 12 stock is coming up next. Well, apart from three triple six, those who've been waiting for your favorite riders from around the world, do again like, subscribe, and share this live streaming on Just Ski World Series coming to you exclusively from Arizona, USA. Ready, Freddy? Let's go back to Don. Thank you so much, CK. I appreciate it. All right, it looks like uh, Orca on the water. That is Tu11 Nakara from Thailand, AKA Orca. He's riding for the King Power team and uh, what an incredible team they've got. I've got another great rider up here with me, Adi as well. We're gonna get to see Otto pretty shortly in another junior class. Brody King came into this one in second place. And Ga uh, Gavin Hoggard, after that first moto, is in third. Ty Smith in fourth. Jet Wilderbor in fifth. And Tristan Hubert in sixth. But right now, it's really been the whole story of a 211. Nakara, there's 883 in second. And there's 412. 
keep saying it's 411, but that's actually Brody King on the 412. Again, your top three riders are Nakara Selassie. That is uh, AKA Orca for the whole shot and the lead. Second place, that's Gavin Hoggard at Layton, California. And in third, boat number uh, four, well, we keep saying 411, but it's actually 412. That is Brody King in third. Gavin Hoggard, the uh, gentleman that is from Layton, California. He's been racing for two years with the Jet, jet Jam crew. He rides a Yamaha Superjet with a four-stroke Superjet, and uh, Ultimate Watercraft is his sponsor. This little gentleman that you're watching, the 211, his nickname is Orca. He is very famous over in Thailand. Uh, his dad is a comedian and an actor. And uh, Nacorn also used to be a great racer. Uh, you probably would remember his race number if you saw him uh, over here in Lake Havasu City again. He visited us several times. So the racing legacy of carrying on with the different families continues as we pass down these different generations. There is a boat number 41, that's Tristan Hubert. Tristan Hubert is out of Wichita, Kansas, sponsored by Big Fish Bale and uh, Naughty Water Racing. And then there is uh, Jet Wildeborn. I do believe Tristan's in fourth and Jet's in fifth. Yes, and then after this, we are gonna take a break and go to some freestyle. Right. This guy has taken flight. I must say I love the outfits that the uh, King Power jet ski team have put together. I noticed Otto is wearing the same type of outfit. White wetsuit with just some black trimming on it and then uh, white long sleeve uh, shirts for protection. Um, these are all neoprene. Uh, a wetsuit that is also got a their race number on the back. It's just got a little slip cover for their number and their name and then a um, really bright yellow jet ski helmet and the wonderful things about that is it makes it so easy to find these riders on the track when you have those very s unique and signature type outfits so not only is he a very fast racer he looks great on the water and he's super easy to find not walking away though from boat number 883 that's gavin hoggart gentleman that's been racing for two years you are watching well you basically you're watching very fast bottle rockets the junior ski 10 to 12 they are racing on stock boats And we have a couple of different divisions that we have these riders in. And one of the divisions is this 10 to 12. And we do a couple of different things in that 10 and 12. Yeah, so, uh, right now, 10 to 12 limited, 10 to 12 stock. And then we do a 13 to 15 limited, 13 to 15 stock. Quite a few awesome uh, listeners on the live stream. They are cheering on 
T211, their Thai rider who has come all the way over here as a junior to compete, truly making uh, this World Finals and this complete WGP series a real international event. So when you're able to have a 10 to 12 year old class, but you've got riders from Thailand, uh, and you are able to talk about that international contingent. To me, it just makes it so much more fun for the racers and for us as well. So just huge props to this big team from uh, King Power Sports Jet Ski Team. He went through a pretty tough section there. Let's talk about these different portions of the track. He's on the right-hand side of the track. This little area is, uh, you can see it's actually a three red buoy or a high-speed three buoy turn. Then he comes into two quick turns, that yellow and then the green, single buoy turns. He's going to approach a... Uh, double buoy and that double buoy indicates you do not have to take a right turn here that is for the runabout riders and so instead of taking the right turn and going out deeper into the track as the big runabouts do ski division is just going to take that double buoy and then head straight back towards that back stretch and you can see that orca just came off of that final turn that left hand turn that red buoy and now he has to pick a split so he can either go to the blue buoys on the outside or he can pick those green buoys on the inside. He went a little bit wide on turn two, just carrying a ton of momentum through there. Does not have any pressure behind him. It's okay to open up those turns, carry a little bit more momentum through the turn. And the checker flag does drop for the amazing Orca. That's boat number 211, Nakura Selassie. Riding for King Power jet ski team from Thailand, and that looks like the whole team down there cheering him on. Uh, and second is going to be Gavin Hoggart. And third will be boat number uh, 411, Brody King. Tristan Hebert coming in from Wichita, Kansas, sponsored by Big Fish Bail Bonds. His dad, of course, Mr. Hebert, who uh, puts on Naughty Water Racing and another one of the great regional promoters that we are so, so, so lucky to hang out with. WGP1 World Championship. Jet Tribe Racing. Jet 
All right, we're back. This is Pro Sport GP and down on the pole position on the inside, that's Seacock Satula after his win in uh, motor number one. Dev Farthing is on the 116 boat. And he chooses to line up right next to Seapox Satula on that inside. So your two top finishers are both on the inside split. Pole position on the outside is boat number T5. And that whole shot on the outside anyway goes to Supak Satula. With a pong. Suang Tan out. With a pong. Wittapong is sneaking around and got the hole shot from uh, Supak Satula. So Wittapong with your hole shot. All right, Wittapong from Pattaya, Thailand on the T5. Supak Satula in second. We're not even into a full lap and already a little bit of real estate opening up. About four seconds are separating Supak Satula from Wittapong. So Supak Satula. is making some decisions here. He went to that inside split, trying to reel in one of his teammates, and that is a Wittapong Suman oh, from Thailand for that second place. Wittapong just loses it. Supak Satula got out of there in that split section and made the pass. So Wittapong is now second. And there is Devin Farthing, a.k.a. the Iceman, putting some pressure on that number T5 boat. We don't Iceman is in third. Iceman and Devin Farthing. Johnny Smith, Bill Dearman, Simon Belcher, and Glenn Young all also in this class. But right now, we have two tie riders, both in first and in second place. Supak Setula and Wittapong Swantang out for your second place. And then uh, Iceman Devin Farthing for third. Supak Setula. Man, he had the golden boy finish in Poland. He had triple aces, three wins in the Poland round, putting him at the top of the World Series championship for now. He's 28 years old, and he is a celebrity in Thailand. He got third in the Pro Sport World Series in 2021. Rides for Freedom Racing Team, lives in Pattaya. Full-time jet ski racer. His first race was nine years old. All right, the Devon. Farthing, gentlemen on 116, the Iceman chasing that second place rider with the poem. And Deb Farthing, uh, another amazing rider from the USA. He's got a two-time world championship titles already listed. Another 
two second 2019 Havasu uh, podiums. Started racing at 17, excuse me, at seven years old. His first win, though, was 11 years old on an American tour stop. His dad, his dad, of course, race royalty, Dustin Farthing. And you were watching uh, Iceman try to run him down. Sipak Situla. His brother Tira represents Thailand on the track as well. And Iceman pushes through out of the inside split, makes the pass on Wittepong. Untaya Ho. So. Dev Farthing is now up in second place. The Iceman moved into second. All right, again, Supak Sutula is leading. And the Iceman in second. And he had to really work on that. He made a strategic decision to line up right next to Supak Satula on that inside. So Supak, having won that first moto, had the advantage, of course, on the pole position. But Dev Farthing, I, I'm not sure if part of that was psychology. Smart move, either way, from a strategy perspective. Uh, either psychology or maybe just felt, you know what, that inside's faster. We're going to have to make a run on the inside. Particularly on the first lap, that inside can be quicker. They design these laps to be as close as possible in timing. But a lot of times they're trying to account for waves. But if it's really super flat, sometimes that inside split is just truly quicker on lap one. Either way, Supak Satula converted it pretty easily. And the Iceman converted again. He got around Supak Satula. Actually, no, he's not in the lead. I got a little excited there prematurely. Wittepong, the gentleman that uh, pulled the whole shot. Wittepong Suan Tang O from uh, Thailand. Rides for Freedom Racing from Thailand. And Dev Farthing chooses to go to the inside. His dad, uh, Dustin Farthing, with multiple world titles. They're all uh, out of Georgia, and Dev Farthing has been going to college. So splitting time between studies and jet ski racing, but he said if he had the opportunity, he would definitely like to go uh, travel more to Europe and uh, Asia, and I'm pretty sure we'll see him at the Thai Cup. All right, again, 116 was able to get around Supak Satula. Supak, I think, had some engine problems. Wittapong up in second. All right, Iceman leading. Wittapong on the T5 boat in a second. All right, Supak Satula, we did get the confirmation that he broke. Ah, that's a tough, tough break. He came into this round in the lead in the point series and frankly hadn't put a foot wrong in Poland and came out here and won that first moto pretty easily. So it's a tough break to see him uh, break down like that. Dev Farthing, the Iceman leading, and uh, Wittepong in second.
Uh, people are actually asking about the points. Well, Supak Satula won the first moto, and uh, Devin Farthing was in second. Devin Farthing will have uh, probably some lead on the points. Yeah, he should be leading coming into that. Uh, it will really depend on where Supak Satula finishes up, Lauren. But I'm guessing with that boat breaking, he's not going to get near as many points. There were 10 riders on the line today. So Lauren Shelton-Smith, to uh, answer your question, I think that uh, Deb Farthing will come into this final moto with a points lead. Hu Tepong Su Wan Tong Kao is your second place rider. And Thailand is definitely fighting. Uh, Jack, yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm looking at the same screen that you are. Unfortunately, I'm not sure where uh, Simon Belcher is. I'll try to find out for you. Deb Farthing taking a quick look back. Final couple of turns as uh, he reels in the second moto win. Determination and persistence definitely paying off for Iceman. 18 years brilliant. With the two uh, world championship titles already, he is hoping for another one in Pro Sport GP. And that is the Iceman, Dev Farthen, taking the win. Wutapong Suwon Tongkao will be taking your second place. Brandon Warner, I think, up in uh, third. And just saw Belcher coming through in fourth. Uh, that's unofficial. Hey, guys, we'll be right back. It's time for Thais to encourage each other. Forward the encouragement to make Thai people and Thailand stronger. Sports Authority of Thailand. National Sport Development Funds. Freedom Racing. Well, that wraps up Moto2 Pro Sport GP with all the adrenaline and excitement, ladies and gentlemen. I'm now standing by the side of the lake with this perfect weather condition. And apart from our viewers from home who watch us live on Facebook, live streaming, and YouTube at Jetski World Series, we have our spectators, our audience on site as well. Let's talk to our audiences here. Hello, what's your name and where you're from, sir? Uh, Ryan Spears from Scotland. Oh, you're from Scotland. And what's your name, sir? Tom Spears. And. <laughs> yeah. So, you came all the way from Scotland here to the US, right? Yeah, yeah, came over to support James Bushel. All right. James Bushel, one of our rider, right? In which class that he joined, once again? He, at home he rides Sport GP, and he rides Pro Runabout, Superstock, and Pro Runabout GP. And only running his runabouts at this meeting. 
how does his performance so far? Well, he's won the World Championship so many times, hasn't he? So speaks for himself. But he's at a disadvantage at this one because he's not brought his proper race boats uh, from the UK over. But he's taken them to the King's Cup and he'll ride Sport GT at the King's Cup as well. Yes, all right. All the best for you know, the riders from Scotland. And also, apart from that, you also will are planning to go to Thailand as well for the World Final? Yes, yes, I'll be there. Well, any um, thing that you especially would like to say um, to the rider or to you know, like your fans out there who perhaps are waiting and rooting for you and um, the rider from Scotland in um, Scotland right now? Yeah, well, we just wish James Bushel the best and I can't thank him enough for everything he does for me. So, yeah. All right, the best of luck to James Butcho from Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the WGP1 World Series Round 2 Live from um, Lake Havasu City, Arizona, USA. Once again, do subscribe, like, and share this live streaming from both channels at Facebook, the Ski World Series, and YouTube as well. Before we tune in the next race, the ladies and gentlemen, right now we take a little break and let's go back to dawn. Thank you so much, CK. That was an awesome interview. And by the way, James Bushel is very celebrated. In the U.S., he has 11 world titles, uh, two King's Cup championship titles, and four European GP titles. So, yeah, he's, he's kind of a big deal, and I thought it was so perfect that you interviewed uh, one of the uh, teams that got to hang out with uh, James Bushel from the U.K. CK, of course, has been uh, helping us out on the beach and keeping us up to date on all the happenings. So right now, you guys, here's what's happening out at Lake Havasu City, Arizona. You can probably guess by all the shouts, but we're getting the crowd all riled up. And the reason we're doing that is we are going to freestyle. We're going to be doing freestyle uh, pro style. The incomparable Lee Stone will be going for 10 world titles in freestyle and he has got a group of incredibly talented competitors that are going along with him. Lee Stone of course also hails from the UK and uh, we're just getting our judges up there warming up the crowd and getting everybody ready for uh, pro freestyle which is going to be coming up. Again, you're just watching the beach as uh, we get the freestyle riders down to that beach. Uh, not sure yet if we're going to be broadcasting that live to you. I'll let you know. I do want to take a moment and say a special thanks once again to DeansTeam.com, performance specialist for all your watercraft needs. Trust that team with more pro stock and aqua X titles than anyone in the world. When you need it done right, go to Dean's Team.
Ladies and gentlemen, you're still watching the WGP One World Series Round 2 live from Lake Havasu City, Arizona, USA. And at the moment, our riders are getting ready for the upcoming race and the freestyles races coming up next. And a lot more races. The WGP One in motos 1, 2, and 3 coming up. Do not go anywhere too far. And once again, kindly like subscribe and share this live streaming on both channels of our Facebook the Ski World Series and this and YouTube as well the Ski World Series do not go anywhere too far
everybody to talk about that and everybody to go through this. And you're going to have one minute of applause today, a minute and a half, nine minutes of music, and that's it. that you and Mark and your uh, team have posed on the line for us. How does that affect your body? All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're still watching the WTP One World Series Round 2 live from Lake Havasu City, Arizona, USA. And it is now time for the freestyle races as our riders and the media crew are getting ready. Our spectators are getting more and more exciting as well. Stay tuned for the upcoming live stream of the freestyles. And once again, kindly subscribe, like and share our Facebook page and this live streaming as well in order to exclusively tune in the information and updates and of course the very exciting tournament of the WGP One World Series Round 2 and Round 3 the final rounds coming up in December in Thailand WGP1 World Championship Try bracing. It's time for Tithe to encourage each other. Forward the encouragement to make Thai people and Thailand stronger. Sports Authority of Thailand.
National Sport Development Funds. Freedom Racing. Ladies and gentlemen, you're still watching the WTP One World Series Round Two. Started off from the fifth to ninth of October from Lake Havasu City, Arizona, USA. Well, after the freestyle style races, coming up next, still many races to go, including the pro uh, after the pro ski GP, the vintage ski is coming up before the pro roundabout GP Moto Two followed by the WGP1 Moto3 Pro M Women's Ski Stock. And here comes the Freestyles races. Well, once again, kindly tune in, like, subscribe and share in order to give a huge support to your favorite riders. All right, your uh, first rider that is out on the water for pro freestyle is Jack Ziegler. Jack Ziegler, who won the amateur freestyle yesterday. Fast combination. He's only going to do a one-minute routines, and then we're going to come back tonight. And we're going to do the night show right outside of Belosian. All right, that was quick, quick, quick. Uh, just one minute for each one of the riders. This is part of their score. And then we will be doing a um, freestyle show this evening. And then we will come back tomorrow for our final. Our next uh, writer that's going to be coming up is Nolan Jukish. Nolan actually 40 years fast, or 40 years high since it's freestyle. All right, we're on these one-minute routines. Nolan Jukish is up next. Here. 
You can't actually see the crowds yet, but they are stacked and packed back there. As we get ready for a pro freestyle, they're going to have three rounds just like the other competitors. Madonna, one foot flip, one hand, one leg, two. Nice little combo. One hand reverse. Free flip, 540, back flip, another back flip, one handed. It's very quick on these combinations. You're watching Nolan Jukish. There's a one hand, one foot. Five forty did opposite on that five forty. Three sixty both directions, one footed backflip. Oh, I'll make that a triple. Three sixty left, three sixty right, one handed, one eighty twice. Wonderful backflip. Can flip. Can flip. One footed backflip. Wow, that's a beautiful combination. Wow, super quick. Nolan Juke is just one of these guys that just gets better and better every year. He's a very young, fun competitor. We were joking when we said he was 40 years old, of course. Nicely done. Now remember, these are just quick one-minute routines. You're watching Pro Freestyle. Well, you can see how packed it is up and down the beach now. Very clean run. Uh, it's going to be hard to mark that, uh, mark that routine down. So the competitors are going to face a conundrum here. You've got to wow the judges. You got 60 seconds to do it, but you can't open up the whole toolbox because you've got still two more competitions you got to go through. So it's a fine balance. How much do you share with them, right? Next up is going to be a very special guest, Nils Vellums. So Nil Vellums actually is a very special friend of Mark Gomez. Mark Gomez unable to compete this weekend. Uh, burst a, a, a sack right in his knee, a little burst of sack for supporting the kneecap. And unfortunately it got infected. Just one of those crazy things and it took him completely out of the competition this weekend. But he didn't want to back out. He wanted to have a ski represented, so he invited a good friend over. This is Nils Vellums. Nils is from Belgium. And a great story behind this. Nils Vellum actually asked Mark to come over to Belgium to teach Nils how to do the super flip. So it's a no-hand opener and a reverse. 360, back flip. By the way, he's only been on this boat for three days. That was a beautiful combination opening up, though. Beautiful 540. Kicking the uh, feet back in. No setup weight for the 360. Going for another little setup wake. One hand flip, 360 left and reverses. Another 360 to the left, another 360. Turn and burn. That was a very quick one minute routine.
We have 12 competitors today in the pro freestyle class. So Niels Vellum's first time at the World Finals uh, by special invitation. Uh, Mark Gomez helped get him over here. Niels, a personal trainer in uh, Belgium, just an outstanding individual and a dear friend of Mark Gomez. In fact, like I said, he had Mark invite him out, or he came out, invited Mark out to Belgium to show him how to do that super flip. And I got to watch uh, Niels actually do the super flip in competition, just a great freestyler. Uh, riding Mark Gomez's ski this weekend. Up next, this is the son of Taylor Curtis. And he is aboard a brand new boat this year. I don't know if you guys remember watching him in 2021. He was actually aboard a Richter that was built specifically for juniors so that they could start getting juniors in the competitions. And they got him into the full-size boat this year with the rest of the pro competitors. And uh, he's pretty excited. He's got a pretty cool combination that he's going to be unwinding for us. And again, he can show some, but you don't want to show too much. So a brand new boat for Coy Curtis. Gentleman that uh, is a cross athlete. He does not just freestyle, he also does close course racing. And man, he had the crowd on his feet yesterday with an incredible charge from Mint Pack all the way up into second place. There's a double point back roll and an oversized backflip. Do want to point out he's only 13. He's going to be one of our youngest competitors ever in freestyle, especially the pro division. No hander spin, no hander 360 backflip, no hand 360 going left, and a flip, and another flip. Beautiful. Uh, one of his sponsors, uh, Anderson Toyota. Special thanks to Anderson. Wow, he really flared out on that one foot flip. Full extension, full flare on that. 540, and he's making it a combination. And that's his new trick that he's been working on. It was a double 540 combination, and he pulled it off. The 540 at the beginning, 540 at the end, and you could see he was happy with that execution. Great job for Coy Curtis. Wow. By the way, um, uh, they are good, good friends with Tyron Montzura, so one of the riders that was injured in the pro ski, and uh, Taylor and Coy uh, both letting me know that they are riding just for uh, Tyron the rest of this weekend. So beautiful story from a great kid that's got a big, big soul. You've been watching Coy Curtis. Neil Smith's going to be up next. Neil Smith out of Northern California. Uh, just waiting for uh, Neil to make his way to the water. Each rider with a one minute routine. Coy Curtis, again, great ride. Okay, up next, Neil Smith. So Neil Smith is on the line. Uh, 
All right, going to do a, a warm up here for Neil Smith. Oh, nice Madonna flip for Neil Smith as an opener. Whoa, we're just uh, holding on to that rowdy beast. Another series of backflips for Neil. Brand new boat for him as well. Well, the idea here is you want to get as in deep water as you can. It's not super deep out here. We have 360, two of, a series of backflips, one foot backflip. Did an inversion instead of the flip, just wasn't quite on the throttle enough. Probably going to be a minor deduction for that. Three more uh, backflips in that series. Yeah, you could see he stood up, so now you understand. If you haven't been to Lake Havasu, you can appreciate that. They're shallow water, but they've got to be as close to the shore and the judges as possible. The judges are up there in the announcer tower, AKA the deck. So they're not terribly far away, but um, the idea is to keep the energy of the crowd engaged, uh, stay as close to the judges as possible so they don't miss any of the minor details or intricacies of these routines. And there are a lot of intricacies when you're watching pro freestyle, a lot of small modifications and variations that they do that make a massive difference in the points and the scoring. And you've got some of the top judges in the world here this weekend, so we wanna make sure that they're on point on that and they're able to be uh, right in front of the judges and as close as possible. Massive crowds today as they watch pro freestyle. We've got Christopher Anazeski coming up next. So uh, Chris out of Jupiter, Florida. This is one of the nicest guys you will ever find on or off either a closed course track or a freestyle track. He is absolutely a huge soul. Loves, loves freestyle. And he is quite the showman. I think you're gonna really like this gentleman's routine. Chris knows how to work a uh, really knows how to work a crowd. You know, wait till he gets kind of the right setup. I get a no hand flip with flair. There's a th whole series of no hand tricks, three in a row. 360 right and left. Does a hood touch flip. And a one foot flip to round out that combination. That was a Big series of tricks lined up in a row for Chris Anazeski, and I do see him locking his handle pull in. Generally, that means, oh, that's a super flip bar coming up. Oh, boy. So he's locked in the pull, locked the pull down, and he's got the bars up. Wow. And he did a super flip on his knees. And there's the full super flip from Chris Anazeski. That was awesome. I really like the little quick backflip on his knees even. That was cool. Keeping the energy moving, keeping the crowds happy, and uh, providing a lot of photo <laughs> opportunities. That was a big 540. He did a full lift on that. Did a uh, tail or rail flip. And he's happy with that. You can see it. What a showman. Chris Anazeski. And the crowds liked it as well.
All right, gentlemen, that's going to be coming to the water next. It's going to be Kyle Krieger. Again, you are watching the one minute first of a series of three rounds. All right, Kyle Krieger making his way out into the water. Got a uh, new revolver boat that he will be competing on. He's very excited about this new boat. And can't wait to see some of the uh, new tricks. Now again, they're not gonna show us everything today, but they are gonna give us, I think, uh, some good precursors to what we're gonna see tonight and then what we're gonna see for sure tomorrow. No hands on a 540 with no hands. Did a little can flip and a one foot back flip. He was pretty happy with that. Good combination and a quick combination. Flares out that back flip with quite a bit of extension, turned it into a triple. Ah, wow, Madonna, beautiful. Actually, 50-50 for Kyle Krieger. Little turn burn at a one foot. Oh, let's just call that a multiple backflip, one footed. 360, uh, one direction right, and then a series of backflips. Quite a bit of flair. Big combo for Neil Smith. Quick little replay of this big combination. It's a no-hander 540, and one of the best combos we've seen today. Multiple backflips. There's your second. That is a can flip. Another backflip. Full extension, added extension. Again, this is the little variations that we're talking about. Looking back at the crowd while he is executing a big series of backflips for the final portion of this combination. Great run for Kyle Krieger. Kyle, by the way, lives in Lake Clark Shores, Florida. He just moved here from California. He's 19. And sponsors are the Ski Clinic and Torrent Pumps jet pilot as well and I wear elite optic oh is my voice slow mode that's a scary thanks Nate <laughs> well, at least I don't sound like some scary cartoon character all right Gabe Jukas is gonna be up next Gabe's got a new boat as well Yeah, Lee Stone is here, and he will be coming up, Nate. Big setup. Oh, he didn't like it. Gabe Jukish. 
Gabe actually going to work the crowd. One of the things that I think nobody does better than the freestylers is how to work a crowd. Whoa! Opener of a double backflip, and the whole crowd lost it. That was the one that he was teasing me about and said, this is something I really want to roll with. So he went for a backflip as an opener. See how that kind of stuff just really blows the uh, crowd away. Big flip, one-footed. And 360, and then multiple one flip, one leg flips, and the crowd loves him. And you can see the whole Jukish team up in that stands. Also, incredible people. No hand, 540. Oh my goodness, massive amplitude on that backflip. He really pushed his body language in there just to increase that. No hand on that 360 to the left. No hand to the left, no hand to the right. Backflip. Oh, if he hadn't have lost that, there would have been zero deductions on that. Oh, look at these tough judges here. <laughs> that was outstanding, truly outstanding. He's pretty thrilled with that. I don't know if you can see on the side of that boat, it actually looks like a checkerboard. It's really cool. It's a carbon fiber boat. You can see it just a little bit. It is wicked. It's a brand new uh, Lee Stone design boat. Gabe Jukish definitely brought the thunder as far as uh, bringing an electric routine to the pro freestyle. And again, they've only got 60 seconds. I mean, it's not like they're you know out there just hanging out. 60 seconds of wow. Here's a cool replay of the, that some of these good parts, and I'm sure one of them is this opener. Massive, massive backflip, and he lands it. See how that kind of stuff just really blows the crowd away. Seven forty, and the triple one foot backflips and you can see from the body language how much he's having to throw that extension to get that, that continued kind of momentum throughout really those close. series beautifully done and this is the routine that lit up the grandstands and the beach at lake havasu city arizona on saturday qualifying all right jason wright also with a really cool Look of uh, look at the carbon fiber hole on this. So Jason Ryan is going to be up next. Jason Wright out of Covina, California, 26 years old, obviously loves freestyle, golf, drag racing, and Sarah. Now, I'd like to know, I'd like to know the story on Sarah, but I think Sarah is one of the likes. He said he dislikes heel blocks. Works at Rancho Cucamonga Fire Department. Uh, said he wants to keep pushing himself and his equipment to its limits and grow the sport. This boat, by the way, is built by TC Freeride, tuned by Hero. It's a Richter V2 boat. His pre-race is uh, make sure his body and boat are all ready to send it. The sponsors are Brop Doctor, Works, Rise and Wild, and Pitch Components. That was a big one-handed flip. Just off the side a little bit on the finish of that. His first competition was at 2018. Freestyle championships, he's a one-time national champion and a one-time world finals champion. Another backflip, you're watching Jason Wright. Beautiful flex flip. Uh, 
Follows that up with another one-footed backflip. A little turn and burn as he gets ready for his next series. He's going to do a two backflip, three backflip, really pushing the extensions. Watching uh, Jason Wright. In beginner freestyle, he was a national champion his very first year. Uh, by the way, this guy likes country, hip-hop, and reggaeton. That's quite the uh, music mix for Jason Wright. All as impressive as he is. Again, special thanks to his sponsors, Risen Wild, Doctor, uh, the Brop Doctor and Works, Pitch Components, Motul, and also special thanks he said to his uh, tuner, Hero. All right, uh, that is going to be Taji Yamamoto up next. All right, he's still warming up. Wanting to make sure the crowd is ready and when they start, green flag will come up and then they're on the clock once they complete their first trick. Tanji Yamamoto just waiting for the perfect setup. Now he didn't like it. Now we'll uh, let you guys know that one of the unique combinations about this particular area of the beach at Crazy Horse is the water comes in, the way the strata is underneath it, the water comes in, it never gets super deep, all the way out to the fourth buoy, and that's why he wanted a good setup for a double backflip. This is a big combination. This is gonna be big. Double, backflip, backflip, 360 left, 360 right. Wow. Oh, he launched himself off. He took so much of that and he loved it. And he's going to continue going. That was a good combination for Chaji Yamamoto. Heel kicker. That looked like a uh, back super, super flip. All right, so a super flip for Taiji Yamamoto. No hander 360. Uh, he's a 2021 freestyle triple crown winner, by the way. So he's defending his championship. Rides for Bun Freestyle. Got third in the King's Cup in 2017. Second in the King's Cup in 2018. Very celebrated rider. You're watching Taji Yamamoto.
Again, your 2021 Freestyle Triple Crown winner just finished his routine. That opener was a bat double backflip. Hey, Jeremy, I'll uh, get those sheets, and when I do, I'll get those sheets. I'll let you know where we are on those positions. All right, you're back, and in case you were wondering uh, who turned the lights out, we had a pretty big front start to move in. I haven't had any uh, moisture yet, but it definitely uh, turned the intensity of the sun down. It's actually cooled us off in a good way here. All right, Brad Turnblum is going to be your next rider up. And two more rides to go. Brad is such a fun competitor. So Brad Turnblum. And then we've got, you know, the one and only coming up. But Brad Turnblum has competed for years. He's got his super flip bars up. Oh, he went right into the super flip as an opener. Wow, super flip and comboed it into that back flip. Uh, and he's uh, flipping out, getting those super flip bars put away so he can finish out the rest of his routine. That was quick. I just want you guys to know that uh, the production team has turned off my slow-mo voice. Sorry about that. Oh, nice. Scarecrow backflip into a 360, then he does a left 360. Another setup to a scarecrow. A big flip setup and a 360. Whoa, he really pulled a high risk remover. Uh, that, re that maneuver was tricky because he wasn't fully ready for that backflip, went for it anyway. And the fact that he was able to execute that final backflip for the combination, that was beautiful. You've been watching Brad Turnblum. Here's your replay for Brad Turnblum on that opening. The very first execution was that super flip, big 360, and a backflip. Just no skimmed that out. Even harder to do that backflip. That is your. And another 360, so a beautiful combination. Just a minor deduction for um, going off the boat on the end. Again, you've been watching Brad Turnblum. Another quick series on Brad and getting that cow uh, crowd all fired up. going to be our final rider of the day. His name probably does not need a whole lot of recognition. You know, this year he's actually going for 10 world titles. This will be his 10th if he pulls it off. 
You're about to watch Lee Stone as he makes his way to the water. This is one of the competitors. Regardless of which side of the pond you're on, has made a legend out of this name, Lee Stone. Again, going for his 10th world title this year, and he's got a, a pretty cool opener. He's just waiting for uh, making sure that water is perfect. He's got a pretty big opener, which I'm not allowed to tell you about until it happens. It is fascinating how secretive the freestyle riders are about their tricks. A lot of the tricks they're having to actually create and uh, once then they work on them and so they commit. But what I find fascinating about this genre of jet skiing is that they don't necessarily do a whole routine layout, big 540, and there it is, double backflip. So that was the combination. Didn't start with the double backflip, started with the 540 into the double backflip, and then completed with a massive combination. And that was a perfect way to lay the gauntlet down. You're watching Lee Stone, but wait. They don't plan each trick out. They're very organic about these trips. Two big backflips, one footer, and another backflip to uh, end that one minute routine. And that was the plan. He planned on opening it with a uh, combination, the 540 into the double backflip, and then he wanted to complete with a backflip. He said, you know what, I got a little extra time. I'll do one more, a couple more tricks here. And a 720 into a backflip for Lee Stone as the final two. And if you didn't have your camera up and ready to go with that, you really missed something special. You're watching Lee Stone. A little bit of a background. He has seven world championships. He's had to endure multiple major surgeries during the injuries partnered with Bun and Freestyle in 2019 for engines on the new revolver. And he was one of the youngest people to win an amateur title. You watch Lee Stone. That is going to complete our freestyle and the uh, qualifications for today. Don't forget we're coming in for an expression session tonight. And uh, that expression session is going to be right by the London Bridge by Blosian. We're going to quickly do a replay here. Take a look at this opening routine of Lee Stone. He doesn't waste any time going big. WGP1 World Championship. Jet Tri Bracing.
This is from Freestyle Riders. All the flips and the amazing actions were phenomenal. Well, thank you, Don, for the explanation to those who may not familiar have seen these great races before. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we get back on track to the WGP One World Series 2022 Round Two from Lake Havasu City, Arizona, USA, very soon. But we now will take a little break for all the riders and all the crew will get ready for the upcoming races. Still many more to go. Do not go anywhere too far. Stay tuned on to both channels on YouTube and Facebook at Jet Ski World Series. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, just a quick heads up. Um, schedule's been uh, pretty wonky, so we're just gonna double check uh, what we've got coming out next. And as soon as we've uh, got the updates on that, I'll bring them to you. But for right now, we're gonna stay live uh, on the off chance uh, that we need to uh, move the races quickly through because we've got A, a little bit of weather coming in, but also <laughs> we've got a lot of races left. Uh, we left you at race number 17 and we have 10 more races yet to go today so we'll uh, let you know where we are on that schedule in just a moment all righty i just got the uh, update from the crew it looks like we are going to take uh what we would like to call a mini break won't be a full hour probably won't even be a full 30 minutes but it'll be a quickie so uh, about 15 minutes or so and we'll be back with more action for you don't go too far you're on Pro Weekend for the WGP World Series 2022, brought to you by Jetra.
WGP1 World Series 2022 Round 2 from Lake Havasu City, USA coming to you live on Facebook and YouTube at Jetski World Series. Today we feature two feeds of the races, feed 3, which you have completed this morning. Then we be continuing the live stream in feed 4. Actually, we have completed a few races and a few classes already before we featured the freestyles races previously. And now, let's get back on track. Well, apart from the Moto2 of the Vintage AC, we're followed by the Pro-Am Runtabout, Stock Up Next, ladies and gentlemen, and many more to come. And the excitement awaits for you. So just let us know where in the world are you from and what time is it in your country at the moment. But don't forget to like, subscribe and share, especially on our Facebook live streaming at Facebook page, The Ski World Series. So now let's get back to Dawn. Hey, thank you so much, CK. Welcome back to an amazing afternoon. You can see that we have had a change in temperature. A little bit of overcast, guys. It is um, a little bit muggy, and the humidity definitely has jumped up quite a bit. Still great race conditions. Oh, yeah, Cal, thank you so much for saying that. It's very much appreciated. I'm glad you guys enjoyed uh, Pro Freestyle. Wasn't Lee Stone something? Hey, coming up next, we're going to have our very first moto. This is Pro-Am Runabout Stock. And as you know, this was, a, I'm just going to say it, it was a royal rumble getting into this thing. To have the likes of Erminio Iantosca and uh, all of the other riders that we saw, just top riders in the business, Dustin Farley, and all of them going into the LCQ, that was insane. 11 nations battling it out for the nation's cup i'll talk more about that coming on but we've got some big numbers 11 nations represented just in pro am read about stock though let's talk a little bit about the series uh mateus seaman actually comes into this with the lead he's out of estonia he's got 180 points he's going to be aboard boat 77 linus lindberg is up next. Linus is on, uh, got 135 points. Abdullah Alfadel, 134 points. And Aldawas, uh, Rashid Aldawas in fourth with 132 points. All right, so up on the line, uh, T79 is on the inside. That's going to be Pernpom Tiropinich. And uh, the gentleman that's got the pole position on the outside, that is going to be boat number T244. Nutacorn Pupak D. And it, uh, just taking a look at the riders, it looks like uh, Vanji Ramjeet is going to be lining up on the out inside of the outside of the inside. I got that very exciting.
Okay, on the lineup, again, just taking a look at the outside, outside, and it looks like it's going to be boat number 19 taking that Cinderella spot. That is Aero Aswar out of Indonesia. Both of the Aswars will be racing today. Aero and Oxa both qualified for the main event. Dustin Farthing on a boat number 79 is on the inside, right in the middle of the inside in the lineup. And Rashid Aldwas on a boat number 17 is lined up in the inside, four in on the inside. Again, they had to draw randomly to get this first one. Pro-Am runabout stock on the line and it looks like they're ready to give them the flag to go. Your points leader, Seaman Mateus. Mateus Seaman uh, also lined up on the inside. We'll see who gets this whole shot. But not quite yet, because they're coming back <laughs> from a red flag. I was so excited too. All right, they're going to bring them back. We had a red flag start. And uh, it looks like Troy Snyder will not be racing in this race, but Tori Snyder will be. And uh, coming back down to the line. And they're off again. Arrow with a pretty decent start. Well, this one's actually got a uh, bonus money added to it. Yamaha's ponied up some whole shot to Nero, uh, but only in the top three classes. And on that inside, it looks like Tori Snyder. Ah, and actually he had the pole position on that outside. And two, four, four. So, Nutticorn. Got uh, that second place spot. Nutticorn Pupakadi. Let's take a look and see. It was a good start for a Tory Snyder.
Taking the outside, I believe that is Nutacorn Pupak B. All right, that was a good hole shot. And uh, boat number 30, I believe, is in second, Abdullah Alphadel. So Abdullah Alphadel has moved up into second. Again, Netacor and Pupak D from Thailand, sponsored by PPP Molding. Foam Solutions. Again, your points leader is Mateus Seaman out of Estonia. Abdullah Alphadel trying to run down Nudicorn Pupak D. And it uh, looks like boat number five is in third. That's Aksa Aswar, notorious for getting very fast starts at the World Finals. He's currently up in third. That is Aksa Aswar back in the third place spot on boat number five. And uh, Troy Snyder has been dropping back a bit. T79, I believe, is in fourth. So again, 244, Nadekan Pike D in the lead. Boat number 30, Abdullah Alphadel in second. Aksa Aswar in third. And uh, boat number T79 in fourth. That is Purnpom Tiratpanich, followed by. Tori Snyder in fifth on the 110 boat. You're watching Pro-Am Runabout Stock. First full lap. Good morning to uh, Thailand. And there is our shot of Tori Snyder as he tries to improve his fate, currently back in fifth on Moto One for Pro Am Runabout Stock. T79, that's Perm Pond ahead of him. Nutacorn got a little tangled up in a turn, spun out slightly. He does go to the outside split. If Abdullah saw that in time, he might have went to the inside to see if he could pick it up. I don't know if he caught it in time. I think he was following Nudicorn Poop get deep to this outside. Pro-Am runabout stock. Just a little look back. It was Rashid Eldawas that won in uh, that first qualifier. One ten.
All right, so the looks like Tori Snyder's actually gotten around. Permplon, not, not Chad, is still hunting him. That is Abdullah Alfadel that we are watching in second. He does follow, not according to that, outside. Abdullah Alfadel from Kuwait lives in Los Angeles. Uh, his occupation is a police officer. Dean Cherrier is the only one allowed to touch my ski, he says. And Alfadel holding on that second place spot. His Dean team sponsored rider. First race was a 207, multiple world championship titles. UAE champ, Kings Cup champion, USA national champion, four time medalist in Asian Beach Games, and he's railing. And that is uh, Permpon putting so much pressure on him. Perpom Tirapanich from Thailand back in third that has put pressure on Abdullah Alfadel. Morning to you, Chalisa from Thailand. Purnpon Tirapanich still putting pressure on Afadel. Abdullah went to the outside. Purnpon to the inside. And Purnpon. on uh, Alpha Dell like a greyhound on a rabbit. All right, it is a uh, Nutacorn, Punk Pock D, Abdullah Alpha Dell. And then Oxa Aswar in third. Okay, Permpon is going to go to that inside split, try to track down Abdullah Alfadel again. And just a couple of laps left to go. You're watching Pro Am Runabout Stock. There goes Nutacorn Pupak D on the foreground. You just saw him come through, and that is the battle between Abdullah Alfadel and Permpon Tira Popinich. Man, it looked like he put that boat on rails taking the turn. That is a perm pond. <laughs> Ooh, he's definitely sticking, sticking his nose in. You're watching perm pond to Rapinich. Trying to make a pass on Abdullah Alfadel from Kuwait. Watching the battle continue between Abdullah Alfadel and uh, Permpom, that is Oxa Aswar. Oxa has, uh, actually, I think Oxa has moved back a little bit. We've got Abdullah Alfadel and Permpom, both of them uh, taking that outside split. Okay, that is Oxa Aswar. Oxa Aswar. The uh, gentleman that uh, rides for Indonesia, Team Indonesia, 
and um, has been doing an amazing job. He was a medalist in the, bra in the Asian Games as well as Arrow, also a medalist in the Asian Beach Games in 2018, the first time that we had the uh, jet skis represented at the Asian Beach Games. And we are on white flag. This is going to be the final lap for Nudicorn Pupakdi from Thailand taking the win. Nudicorn chooses that outside split again. Always a risk whenever you're doing that on the last lap. Feels like he's got enough gap between himself and Abdullah Afadil. And it looks like it's going to be a clean run. Nudicorn Pupak D takes the win in moto number one. You're watching Pro-Am Runabout Stock. And oh, that was close. You could actually see right behind uh, Nudicorn's shoulder as Abdullah Al Fadel and Permpon coming through. It does look like Abdullah Al Fadel did hold him off for that second place. It is going to be Permpon for third, Aksa Aswar for fourth, and Tori Snyder unofficially for fifth. Still uh, watching the <laughs> final couple of riders come through. <laughs> we'll be back after this. WGP1 World Championship. Try bracing. All right, you guys, welcome back to Junior Ski, 13 to 15 stock. All right, on the line, we've got moto number two. Here's your winner for the first moto out of Thailand, sponsored by King Power. It is Natai Nikinapan. Uh, what a great rider. Nickname Otto, by the way. This is our 13 to 15 class. Second place out of moto number one out of Corona, California, sponsored by Parker Boat Company, TC Freeride, Ignite Racing, and uh, Pro Watercraft. It's the 171 of Josh Simon. In third, Ander Hubert Laurie out of Estonia. In fourth was Sadie Meir out of Lake Mills, Wisconsin. And uh, Hendrick Smith was on the 86 boat. He was in fifth. Jake Wilson got sixth. Heber Blackmore got seventh. And Madison Elders got eighth in the first moto. That's how it looked in the first moto. And you can uh, actually see these guys on this lineup. That's Heber Blackmore. All right, race number 21. On that pole position, on the inside, it's going to be not to not, keen upon. And uh, right next to him, boat number 98 on that inside, that's going to be Ender Hubert Lorry. So you're First and third place riders both lined up on the inside split. And you can actually see Otto's nickname posted uh, right on the back of his uh, jacket there. 
And then on the outside is boat 171, that's Josh Simon. Pole position on that outside is a gentleman that got second, Josh Simon. And again, one of the race favorites, gentleman that won moto number one, not to nine, Keena Potton, AKA Otto. Otto is his next name, nickname. See Jerry Wong down there. Jerry has one of those very famous race numbers, 88. Used to race, actually at the triple eights. Used to race here, came from uh, Alberta, Canada. It's great to see uh, so many celebrities even in the stands. And we're just getting ready to go. You can see Josh Simon down there on that pole position. On the outside, outside is Madison Elders out of Antioch, Illinois, sponsored by Nahi Racing. Madison lined up on the outside, outside. You're watching Junior Ski, 13 to 15 stock as they get ready to go. And again, your top three from Moto 1. Not to none. Keena Pahan, followed by Josh Simon for second. And Andrew Hubert Laurie for their third place. Ooh can actually see the changing colors in the background on that landscape. What we're dealing with there is a storm front has been moving in. We've been really lucky though. I have to say when we started the week on Monday when we had practice, we lost our scoring tower. I mean, it collapsed. Uh, we had a super high winds, had to stop practice temporarily. You guys have ever been out here, you know what I'm talking about. We were able to recover from that Everything was uh, put back in place and ready to go by Tuesday, our first race day. But uh, it got a little scary there for a while. Right now we are getting weather coming in, but so far we haven't had any moisture and just enough wind to make it nice and comfortable. I just wanted to repeat coming into this round in the World Series, it is Andrew Hubert Laurie that has 173 points followed by Luke Hoke. Luke unfortunately not made, able to make it over to the World Finals. So the uh, only person carrying points over from Poland in that first st stop will be Andrew Hubert Laurie. And even though he's third out on the track, at the end of this, he's going to be number one in points again. Oh, great shot of our uh, course marshals. And man, just huge kudos to the amazing amount of work today that uh, they've been through. That is Sarge that you're walking, watching right now. Sarge is in charge of the start grid, which means as a course marshal, he's got a ton of duties he has to deal with. One of them is to make sure that they don't jump the starting line. Oh, and we're off. Not a dime. Keena Potton, a.k.a. Otto. Great start on that inside split. And there's a lot of shouting on the live stream for Otto. Otto, by the way, is the T211 boat. T211 boat out of Thailand. And that T211 is going to get the whole shot. 
Oh, he got perfect setup there. So your King Powered Sponsor Rider once again. A uh, little bit of update on uh, Tyron. I'll give you that in just a minute. They're both riders uh, were transported. Uh, Jeremy Pere is uh, okay and was released. Uh, Tyron was transported up to Las Vegas for uh, additional help. We'll give you the update on that as we get it. 106. And uh, 28, so 106, that is. Madison Elders up there. And boat number 28, Andrew Hubert Laurie in third. Watch the T211. Light it up. Ooh, just a little bit of a correction. This has been one of the more technical areas of the track all week long. What you're looking at there is a double 90 degree turn. And if that wasn't crazy enough, they actually put it a little against the waves, just for fun and giggles. Looks like boat number 171 uh, is that second place rider. That's Josh Simon we talked about. And then uh, Andrew Hubert Laurie. Again, T211, followed by 171. Well, our leader is now coming off the outside splits, going to the outside as the leader, second follows in tow. Watching the junior ski stock. It is a uh, nudicorn, excuse me, not to nine Kinapon, followed by the 171 boat of Josh Simon, and then uh, boat number 28. Oh, check that. I am so sorry. I forgot about Madison Elders, and I can't forget that. Madison 106 is in third. So Madison Elders in third. And then 207. Ninety-eight in that uh, fifth place spot. That's Andrew Hubert Laurie, and then one sixteen is uh, Hubert Blackmore. All right, so again, T211, not to none, Keenapon, uh, AKA Auto, riding for Kings Power, rocking this junior ski 13 to 15 class. Can't talk about it though without talking about Josh Simon in second out of Corona, California. And uh, Madison Elders, who had a tough break in the first moto, she's up in third. 
And then boat number 207. And then we've got boat number 98. Uh, Andrew Hubert is actually in fourth. And is Andrew Hubert Loring. Andrew just keeps sewing up in different boats every moto. Again, Andrew Hubert Laurie is your points leader coming into this round. He's on that 98 boat. You can see the little lower portion of that wetsuit. He's got a green on that lower portion of the wetsuit. Andrew Hubert Laurie got a first at Ski Juniors 13-15 in the World Series 2021. He's literally defending his uh, World Series championship in this class. three-time world champion and a four-time European champion. And he's up against this phenomenal rider. Not to nine, Kinapon, AKA Auto, another King Power jet ski team rider. And I have to say, just watching these two riders has been outstanding. 171 in uh, second place, that is Josh Simon. Madison Elders in third. And Andrew Hubert Laurie. We are rounding out the final few laps here of the Junior Ski 13 to 15 stock. White flag is out, and uh, Josh Simon in a battle between himself and uh, Andrew Hubert Laurie. Josh says he likes motorsports and dislikes Diet Coke. That's awesome. So again, T211. And uh, you can see him giving a nod to the tower, letting him know that uh, we're wrapping it. That was actually uh, the checker flag for T211. He was like, wait, what? That's going to do it for the T211. He didn't have to do that extra part. He was overachieving right now. Checker flag was already out. He just kept on erasing. Ander Hubert Laurie got around at the last minute for third.
Hey, by the way, you guys, I'm here with uh, a nudicorn, Pupak D, who took the win in uh, the Pro-Am runabout stock class. That was highly contested. They had to qualify to get in. It was an amazing run. Smoked the whole shot and ran away with it. And we get the chance to catch up with him. And I would love to know, uh, CK is going to help me translate. I would love to know how he trained to be that fast. Um, for World Finals, what were your feelings when you got the whole shot and then also saw the checkered flag? How did you feel? Newcorn, good luck. You looked spectacular. Thanks so much for coming up, sir. Awesome ride. Thank you, guys. All right, we are on to Pro Ski. All right, Cole Kramer is lined up on the pole position on the inside. This is going to be our first moto. Quentin Bosch also lined up on the inside split. Rafael Moron lined up on the inside. Valentin Dardalot on that inside. Well, you can just look down the line and see that's your outside line. And it is going to be Mads Cock Hansen on the pole position. You see Jeremy Perret down there. On that outside split, you've got Mads and Severy Solonen. Martin Manny is lined up on the outside. The Iceman, Dev Dog, lined up on the outside as you were watching uh, Quentin Bosch as he gets ready. And uh, Jeremy Pere is lined up on the outside. And Kevin Ritterer has lined up on that outside as well. He is second from the very far end. And Mads Cock Hansen uh, lines up on the outside outside. Yeah, and you are looking at some celebrities there, Revan Harris. We've got uh, Nacho Armias listed on the sheets, but he will not be on the lineup. Oh, Kevin Redder looked solid on that start. We are underway with Pro Ski. Oh, that's going to be Martin Banny on the outside. A beautiful shot of that wicked fast boat. And Martin Banny from Estonia looked so good in Poland. And Martin going for broke on that one. And Martin Banny with the whole shot. Jimmy Wilson in second. And that is going to be Rafael Moron in third. Oh, check that. There were two 44s. Rafael Moron is in fourth. That is Camden Powell in third. Rafael Moron in fourth. I 
Brandon, and in that top four, we have not seen either Quentin Bosch or Kevin Redder. That's how fast this field of riders is. You're watching Martin Manny from Estonia. Martin Manny is in this uh, mix in the points for the World Series as well. And log jump officially open. So Rafael Moran comes into this with the most points from the Poland round, 187. Kevin Redder in second with 181. Martin Manny in third with 175 points coming into this. And Nacho, of course, not racing. But uh, he is in fourth. Quentin Bosch in fifth in points with 149. All right, so Camden Powell and Rafael Moran, both on the 44 boat. Uh, you got third and fourth respectively. It's going to be Camden Powell in third and Rafael Moran in fourth. What a pace from Martin Manny. Martin Manny rides for Team Free Time, Jet Ski Commander, 2020-2021 Estonian Ski Champion. He was third in the King's Cup in 2019. He lives in Saku, Estonia. He's only 21 years old. He retired at one point after an amazing number of frustrations uh, trying to get his boat running, but came back, and are we ever glad he did. And look at Jimmy Wilson blowing wide, trying to get the broom out and sweep on uh, Martin Manny, Jimmy Wilson in those signature board shorts. Jimmy Wilson uh, used to race, stand up, and then gave that up for a while and went to uh, run about on the tours but we'd love to have him back. I just saw him not too long ago in a stand-up in Europe, and he is back, and he is putting the pressure on Manny, and it is going to be Manny to the outside, Jimmy Wilson on the inside. Jimmy Wilson lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. He's a firefighter. Ski was built by Borgstrom Racing. He said he likes to get ice cream before a race. That's his pre-race routine. Oh, I think Jimmy Wilson's got it. Jimmy Wilson has moved into the lead after a spectacular run through that inside split. Look at Martin. He's like, I'm not done with you. This is going to be outstanding. Log jump open. I think the only difference is Manny's just a tad bit slower over that log jump. Jimmy is a seven-time pro ski national champion, two-time amateur world champion, and an endurance champion. Four times he got top three in pro ski in Havasu, and right now Jimmy Wilson putting his mark on the first moto in pro ski GP1. And this, I'd have to see, is my dream team for sure watching ski. Obviously uh, missing having Tyron out there and our hearts go out for him but this is amazing to watch uh, this first moto with Martin Banny burst going to the outside again Jimmy Wilson going to the inside Ninety-eight is moving up. Quentin Bosch was back in fifth. Meanwhile, you got Camden Pell. Camden Pell putting pressure, and uh, Kevin Redder has also moved up. So Kevin Redder, from not too good a start, I'm taking it, is up in fourth. 
And I believe Quentin Bosch is on the move through this pack as well. There's Rafael Moran. All right, so Jimmy Wilson. Going through the uh, split section. Looks like Redder are going to take that outside split. And it is Jimmy Wilson coming through. All right, so Jimmy Wilson, about a five second lead from Martin Manny. Oh, Manny quicker through the splits. And Camden Powell under pressure from Kevin Redder. You can see Camden Powell coming through on the 44. And Kevin Redder right behind him in fourth. That is Rafael Moran in fifth. Watching Rafael Moran, that is your points leader for the World Series. And can you imagine, he's back in fifth place right now. That's how deep the talent goes. And the fact that you don't see Quentin Bosch right up in this top grouping, I mean, that is highly unusual. Quentin Bosch took the World Series last year, 2021. He's your defending world champion in that. And uh, look at the pace for <laughs> little Jimmy Wilson. Racing in board shorts, no less. He makes us look like an afternoon cruise. Martin Manny in second, but you can see Kevin Redder with the line, and Kevin Redder moves into third, coming right into that log jump. And there's Quentin Bosch. I was waiting. Quentin Bosch is in fourth. All right, so Jimmy Wilson, Martin Manny, Kevin Redder. And now Quentin Bosch in fourth. Who would have thunk it? And then you've got Rafael Moran in fifth. That backstretch is insanity. Jimmy Wilson seems to really be favoring that inside split. He's really got to start uh, watching for the riders behind him, Quentin Bosch. It's got a pressure, Jimmy Wilson goes a little sideways. That got a little tense. That could have gone bad very quickly on that third and final jump. That is not one, not two, but a triple log jump that they have to navigate. And Jimmy Wilson got sideways on it. All right, the double buoys uh, indicate the difference between the runabout class uh, and the stand-up class. Because you know that Jimmy Wilson just went right by those and then headed deep back towards the channel. He's going out to that final series of technical turns before he gets to the back stretch. Runabouts actually just take a right and keep on going. Jimmy Wilson has been leaning into that inside split. Out of Charlotte, North Carolina. He was born in Ohio. 100% water baby, he says. Been in North Carolina since 09. Loves to spend time on the water with his son. And apparently he loves to run down other riders and have a great time racing and make some good passes as well. All right, so we have the top three 
That is Jimmy Wilson, Martin Manny, and Kevin Redder, and then Quentin Bosch in fourth, Rafael Moran in fifth. That is uh, Rafael Moran. Oh, actually, check that up. You know what? Camden Powell still back in third. So Jimmy Wilson, Martin Manny, Camden Powell in third, uh, Redderer fourth, and Quentin Bosch in fifth. Camden Powell playing a smart game. He's actually following Jimmy Wilson through that inside split. Ooh, that was pretty. All right, so Camden Powell been hunting uh, Martin Manny. Martin starting to tire a little bit, and that is slowing up. Camden Powell enough that Kevin Redder is going to get in this mix. Triple log jump and Kevin Redder trying to sweep Camden Powell. Kevin Redder. Gets around. And Camden Powell went down and that was just enough for Kevin Redder to get in front of him. Kevin Redder moves into third place. And Camden, actually, that was a pretty amazing recovery. He went sideways, bounced on the boat, but recovered. That has to be one of the best recoveries I've seen. So Redder in third and Camden Powell in fourth, but I would not count him out. Quentin Bosch, fifth, and Rafael Moran is in sixth. Kevin Redder, what a crazy. Oh, Manny was trying to get through there, but uh, Manny got passed by Kevin Redder. So Kevin Redder. Kevin Redder has now moved into second. And now Quentin Bosch is chasing Martin Manny. So Kevin Redder in second place. So you got Jimmy Wilson with the whole shot and leading. And then Martin Abani moved back into third. It's Kevin Redder and then Martin Manny in third and Quentin Bosch in fourth. Team Kev racing, uh, Kevin Redder rides for Team Kev, he's only 29 years old. He was a student and now a PWC athlete. Jet Ski World Cup at 2018 champion, six-time world champion, six-time European champion, four IJSBA world titles, two King Cup wins for Kevin Redder. That is the gentleman that was in second. And how about it for Jimmy Wilson? What a magnificent job for the gentleman that lives in North Carolina. That's going to be Kevin Redder in second. Martin Manny. All right, again, your top five. Kevin Redder, oh, excuse me, Martin, Jimmy Wilson, Kevin Redder, Martin Manny. Then uh, Quentin Bosch ended up in fourth. Camden Powell in fifth, and Rafael Moran, your top six. And you can see uh, Quentin Bosch just chilling like a villain. We'll be back right after this. WGP1 World Championship.
Jet Tribe Racing. Back to Pro-Am Women's Ski Stock. This is going to be our final moto of the day for the Pro-Am Women's Ski Stock, that is. Getting that lineup on the pole position is going to be Lucy Gansby on the inside. And it is going to be Emma, Emma Nelly Ortendahl on the pole position on the outside. All right, here is the lineup on where these guys are positioned. You can see Lucy Gadsby down there with her dad holding her. And then that looks like uh, Anna Glennon next to her. And then boat number 30, that is Jana Borgstrom. Jana third from the uh, pole position on the inside. That's 831. Ariana Tayer. Ariana out of Lake Havasu City. She's about midway in on that inside. And then boat number 85. Alif Baylor on the uh, inside as well. And Alyssa Musselman also on the inside. On the outside, it is going to be Eminelli Ortendahl on the pole position. Reese Geis next to her. And then in that third place position would be boat number 64, Yasmin Eprous. Yasmin Eprous took the win in the first moto. Wow, this is so cool. Excuse me, she got second. Oh, I'm all kinds of getting uh, confused on that. My apologies. She got third in the first moto, and she won the second moto. And then Lucy Gansby won the second moto and got a third in moto number two, which gives them a tie for 108 points between Yasmin and Lucy Gansby. And we got a... We got a bit of a yard sale happening on that uh, started line, so they are going to red flag it. All right, we're going to have to re-rack the uh, Pro-Am Women's Ski Stock. I'll let you know if they do get a call for a uh, penalty on that. So just waiting to see yeah, if anybody is going to get called. They just got to get the riders back to the line. Also, 
Again, uh, Eminelli Ortendahl is on the pole position on that inside. Just waiting till they get them sorted out and get them ready to go. But you can see Elisa Musselman having to grab goggles. All right, we got Elisa Musselman ready to go. That's what happens, man. We easy to lose goggles when you're out there racing. In fact, I would say that was probably one of the highest pieces of equipment for having to replace it constantly. All right, again, just waiting for this restart. And uh, while we have an opportunity to do that, all right, we've got them underway. And, uh, ooh, very nice start. That was actually uh, Nottarelli from Argentina, Paula Nottarelli. All right, so we've got uh, Eminelli Ortendahl from the outside split, and she's going to meet up with a very fast rider, Eminelli Ortendahl, and Eminelli shuts the door. And that is going to be Lucy Gadsby in second. And then uh, Reese Geis in third. I uh, heard some whistles, so must have a uh, rider down. Still dealing with overcast skies, which is great for the fans, but it's a bit tricky for water conditions because it's very hard to identify those waves and the, especially the sneaker waves coming in when that ferry moves back and forth. Uh, Eminelli Ortendahl rocking that outside split. And Lucy Gadsby is going to be a threat. Here's the points coming into this. Lucy Gadsby with 173 points. Eminelli Ortendahl is in second for the World Series with 166 points. Lisa Kassan Battaglia in third with 144. And Anais Mishler in fourth. And there's Lucy Gadsby. Your second place rider. We generally call her the eight ball. She's a seven time junior champion from multiple countries. She's a three time ski lights champion, a one time ski stock champion, 
three times ladies British champion. Here's what I love about Lucy. She likes country music in food, except she hates healthy food, which is hilarious because she's this top athlete. Um, she's got such a cute pre-race routine. I just have to share it. So Lucy, uh, that you're seeing on the screen as it come through, there's Emma Nelly Orton Dahl. Emma just uh, helped put on the Norwegian Championships a little over a month ago. She used to be a body pump instru instructor. She's only 24. She debuted in 2010 on the circuit in Europe. She's got a two-time Swedish championship. She's a Swedish Cup winner, five times world champion over here. She's a Nordic champion and a European champion as well. A huge pedigree for Eminelli Ortendahl. All right, it is Eminelli Orton Dahl on this outside split. She has a very unique riding style. You'll notice that she really focuses on keeping her upper body as relaxed as uh, possible. She's got the courtesy markers as she comes through. Actually, uh, in this round, Yasmin Eprous and Lucy Gansby are tied with 108 points, and Ibanelli Ortendahl coming into this, she's two points behind both Yasmin and Lucy. So with this win and getting 60 points, she would move ahead of both Yasmin and uh, Lucy. Which does pose the question, where is Yasmin Epros? Okay, so just double checking uh, where Yasmin Eprous is, and I'm trying to find her boat. Did look like I got a glimpse of that black and uh, neon. Ooh, Eminelli trying to work through lap traffic. <laughs> I don't think about number 335 realizes that uh, she's getting lapped. That's Sadie Muir. <laughs> she was fighting for that one. So it is um, Eminelli Ortendahl and Lucy Gadsby, then Reese Geis. And then, honestly, we've got 777, but I can't tell. I haven't been able to put my eyes on it if it's uh, Anna Glennon or Alyssa Musselman. And then Lisa Kassan Batalia. Lisa Kassan uh, is in fifth place. And then Ariana Tayer. And I do believe Jana Borgstrom is moving up. And it sounds like uh, Yasmin Eprous went off of her boat early 
or had boat problems, but she is on the track gathering points, but she's currently running last. Emanelli Orton Dahl just cruising through this final couple of laps. Emanelli Orton Dahl, she really does like that outside split. She feels, I mean, just looking at her, she feels to me like she's truly in sync on that outside so unless she gets a whole lot of threatening from uh, Lucy Gadsby but I would really watch her Lucy's quite good at sneaking up on riders And Lucy Gadsby coming through in second. Lucy's uh, got a little distance between her and Eminelli Ortendahl. So right now in cruise control, just working through lap traffic, waiting for an opportunity. You're watching uh, Lucy Gadsby, a.k.a. the eight ball. And even though she's not riding her signature number eight boat, at least she's got numbers that add up to eight, which is still fair. Checker flag is out for Eminelli Ortendahl. <laughs> she loved that win. Congratulations to Eminelli. And it's going to be uh, Lucy Gadsby for second. You're watching uh, that final for women's ski. Ooh, that was a big battle for uh, Yasmin E. Prowse trying to uh, sneak up into fourth.
We're on to amateur women's runabout, 1100 stock. Now I'm just pulling the numbers on the line for you. All right, so we are uh, on this lineup with Amateur Women's Runabout. Oh, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> All right, we're back, and uh, on the pole position on the out outside was T26, and that is your battle for the hole shot, and Sasina Poonam, coming from that outside, takes the hole shot. And she had to real shut down uh, Orifon. Orifon was on the pole position on the inside. And also shut down a T65, Shanapa, full my. So Sasina uh, taking the whole shot. There's Sophie Francis up in that top five. Boat number uh, 361, that is Mariana Perdoma Cespedes from New York. Back in the sixth place spot. <laughs> Didn't mean to uh, tease you too bad on that, but just as I was trying to uh, set up the rundown, uh, we, have to, we have to honor all of our sponsors, and unfortunately, we needed to go to commercial, um, but we had to do it right away, so I didn't mean to tease you with the lineup, but uh, sometimes it just works out that way. Welcome to the wonderful world of live streaming at World Finals, especially when you have a storm moving in, because uh, that's what's happening. All right, Sasina Poonam. She's got to deal with an additional problem because the storms are starting to move in. We've been really lucky this week with weather, but uh, it might go pear-shaped on us. Reese. Man, it's crazy out here. Sasima Punam, you can see the uh, visibility changing. That's because the wind kicked up almost instantly, and uh, we've got a bit of a dust storm going out over the water. Ooh, that ceiling conditions are crazy. You can imagine it's even worse for the riders. Punam, that is T26. She's got a perfect pair of bookends, two first place wins, both first and uh, second moto. And then in second place is Orifan Terrapot Panich uh, with 101 points. And then she is tied, Fawn is tied with Shanapa Polamai in uh, points for second. So Fawn and Shanapa, and then uh, Sophie Francis was in fourth. Madison Elverders is in uh, fifth for the overall so far. So Sophie 
just a little bit off of the podium. She's got 86 points. And uh, 25, that is Orofan Tirapat Panic. She has 101 points. You're watching the students in Thailand. First time over to the United States for the World Finals. So Sina Poonam having what I would call is a spectacular uh, run. She's had two first place finishes coming into this. And she's currently got the whole shot and uh, is leading in the third, leading in the third moto. And uh, she's doing super, super well. There's a student and an amazing lady, Sasina Unam. Only 18 years old. Isn't that crazy? Never been here to the U.S., uh, although she's quite the racer out in Thailand. I got the opportunity to watch her in Poland. And uh, while this is not a series, uh, she did get the podium in Poland as well. Her favorite music is God Talk. I'm not sure what that is, but God Talk is her favorite type of music. I'm going to have to find out what God Talk is. She, lo <laughs> she loves uh, vegetables, uh, growing vegetables and raising chickens. She likes working on her jet skis as a mechanic. Uh, fun fact about Sasina, she actually loves to dance, and she also likes enduro motorcycles. <laughs> Big surprise. You're watching uh, Sasina Poonam. Well, for those of you that have been out to World Finals in years past, I'm sure you're familiar with these conditions when we get into a big windstorm. You can see what it's already doing to the water, starting to flatten that water out in an odd way, but it is picking up. We're getting a 40 mile an hour gust and that came from nowhere. But we've been uh, watching that storm front move in for the past two hours. Sasina Poonam, she's like, no problem. I'm out here riding, snowstorms, no big deal. Rainstorms, also no big deal. <laughs> I don't know that she's even seen a snowstorm. It gets pretty warm and inhuman in Thailand. And unfortunately, we are fast approaching. Yeah, we're approaching a time when we might not be able to uh, do the racing. We are going to actually have to red flag these guys because we're uh, getting into an unsafe situation out here. So uh, lost visibility on the track and due to that challenge, uh, they have decided for safety reasons to call the racing for today after uh, this race and they've been over halfway so they will go ahead and red flag that one i would not be surprised if uh, they go ahead and let those stand because they were over halfway on that again sasima punam was taking the win on that third moto we'll give you the update on that tomorrow when we come back live so again they are uh, red flagging that race and uh, bringing the amateur women runabout 1100 stock back. Yeah, so the idea here is um, when we run into these unsafe conditions, uh, we have to just make sure that we take care of it. You know, we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you so, so much for being here. We'll get you the update on that schedule as soon as we got it, and we'll get it posted. Thanks for joining us. You've been watching the World Series.
It's time for Tithe to encourage each other. Forward the encouragement to make Thai people and Thailand stronger. Sports Authority of Thailand. National Sport Development Funds. Freedom Racing.